Uh, I would like to talk about advanced quantification and visualization techniques that we have um, in order to capture deformation in analog models of, of tectonic processes. And I have to emphasize this, what I'm about to show is, of course, um, based on the collaboration with many people, mostly from uh, the University of Bern, but also from the Royal Holloway University in London and from people from the GFZ in Potsdam. So before we start, we can first ask why would we, why would we even um, need analog models or models per se? And if we look at the, at the map on the left side, we see the Red Sea and the opening of the Red Sea. And if you see these red arrows, we see that the maximum velocities there are about 20 millimeters per year. So of course these are um, in, insanely slow processes. And if you look at the width of the, of the rift, it takes a lot of time with these velocities to actually open such a rift. So this is a big advantage that we have if we use um, models because we can reproduce such uh, processes within a few hours in the lab or in a computer model. And that's exactly what you see on the right side is such a top view of a, of a, of a model where we have a rotational opening. And you see in the lower part of the model that we slowly develop a rift as the model extends. Now, as I said, this is a top view and this, is, this has become a bit of a, you could say old fashioned way to, to describe these models if we just look simply at, at top views. And therefore we try to actually analyze and quantify the deformation that we have in these models. And I would like to show you some um, examples that we have from the University of Bern. And I would like to do that based on this model that you just saw. Uh, as I said, it's a rotational model. We have a rotation axis in the middle, which basically separates um, an extensional domain where we create a rift structure from a contractional domain um, where we eventually will see some thrusting. We have a very simple setup where we use brittle um, a brittle layer consisting of sand, which is simulating the brittle upper crust. And then below, we have a viscous mixture um, of a material which deforms in a, in a ductile fashion to simulate the lower parts or the warmer parts of the crust. So if you have such a machine, um, if we want to quantify deformation, we first need to ask ourselves, how can we capture deformation? And for this, we have a monitoring setup um, which basically consists of uh, two different things. And the first one is the blue cameras that you see on top, which we use for surf surface deformation analysis. This is basically a very simple um, array of three cameras, of three DSLR cameras, um, with which we are able to quantify deformation at the surface of the model. And then the second part, if we want to know more about the internal deformation of the model, if we want to capture what's going on inside of the model, uh, we make use of a close collaboration with the Forensic Institute here in Bern. And we are uh, actually allowed to use their X-ray CT scanner to do so. So I would like first um, focus on the, on the blue part, on the surface deformation analysis. And to quantify deformation at the model surface, we make use of um, a technique which is called the digital image correlation or DIC. And what this is doing is it basically correlates or cross correlates um, intensity patterns from subsequent images or subsequent time steps. And based on this, it's able to identify displacement vectors uh, over time, which then can be split up into two components um, in a two, on a 2D plane, basically. In the case, if we have, um, if we have uh, a stereoscopic camera setup, we are also able to map the topography over time, which then also allows us to, to um, define the vertical displacement of the displacement field. And like this, we are able to obtain a three-dimensional displa displacement field at the surface of the model. Now, how does that look like? Um, we have here again the same model that I showed you before on the left. 
uh, it's the top view. And then on the right side on top, we have the evolution of the topography. And at the base, we have basically the evolution of the displacement or respectively its derivative, um, the strain. And the strain in this case is maximum normal strain, which is um, a good indicator for, for stretching. It's basically the, the magnitude of the stretching axis. And if I run the model, we see now that in contrast to the left side, uh, we have a way better idea of what is going on. We see the topography, how it evolves, you see how the rift evolves, how it subsides and how it propagates towards the rotation axis. And what we see at the bottom with this strain is that we have a very localized deformation, um, which is indicated by the strain. And we see that we have these two rift boundary faults, but as the model uh, continues, as it goes on and on, we also see that over time, we start to develop these intra-rift faults, which is something which we probably would not see if we just look at the top view image or the top view movie. Okay, so what I've shown you so far is basically quite state of the art uh, these days if we analyze sandbox models. And as I said before, in Bern we are quite lucky because, because we are able to use a CT scanner. And if we scan our models, what we basically obtain are then these volumes, which we also just have seen before from Alessandro, but a bit on a larger scale, of course. And you see on the left side, such a volume, such a CT volume, um, where the rift develops over time. And if we have such a volume, of course, we can then take any slice um, in any direction that we want um, to see the internal evolution, which is what you see on the right side. And this is all nice and this has been done before, of course, but what we want to do is similar to the surface, we want to quantify the deformation internally. And to do so, we have a relatively similar approach uh, as seen before, instead of the digital image correlation, we use digital volume correlation or DVC, which we also just have seen before. It's the same principle as DIC, but it works on the volume, so on volumetric data. And in this case, we do obtain a three-dimensional displacement vector, but not at the surface, but really in space. And that gives us um, the big opportunity that we see deformation inside of the model in three dimensions and also strains. So um, if you look at this, how does that look like? We then see that on the right side on top, we have such a, a CT volume again from the model at a final stage. And we can take any cross sections that we want and we can display any displacement components we would like to and so on. And on the left side, the green um, indicated by the green frame, you see such a horizontal slice through the model, which is in a way similar to what we see at the surface. But in this case, it really goes uh, through the brittle layer of the model. And you also see that there's already nicely localized um, subsidence um, indicating the rift, of course. Um, at, the lower, at the lower part, we see indicated by the blue frame, we have such a longitudinal transect. And there's the same, we see vertical displacement uh, indicated by blue, we have the subsidence in the rift. But at the same time, we also see in the viscous domain, just below the, the brittle domain, we see some up, upwelling structures indicated by the red um, color. And that's of course also something that we see if we have such a classical transect, which we can see on the right side at the bottom. So these two techniques are quite nice to then obtain a comprehensive uh, picture of the displacement and the strains and so on. But if you want to go on, we can then ask, how can we extract more data? How can we get more information out of it? What can we do to obtain certain patterns perhaps, or detect some mechanisms, underlying mechanisms and so on. And this is an example where we used um, a threshold on surface data. So this is from digital image correlation. 
And this is from the same model. And we just set a threshold to the strain in such a way that whatever you see is evolving in red has a strain value higher than 10% or 0 0.1. And everything which is white is just below. And if we apply that to every model, we get a very standardized way um, how we can track the rift propagation. And that's exactly what you can see on the left side, where we did that for several models. And there we have rift tip propagation over time. And you can see that we then detect certain patterns, which we still would not see even if we quantify the deformation. But by extracting that information, we are then able to see that we have two different phases of propagation. So we have first a very fast one, indicated by these uh, orange arrows, and then it slowly uh, slows down as the rift tips come closer to the rotation axis. So as a summary, we can say that we have these very nice tools, um, the digital image correlation for surface visualization, and we have the digital volume correlation to quantify and visualize deformation uh, internally in the model. And if we combine those two methods, we get a really comprehensive image of how models or how the deformation in our sandbox models evolve. And then last but not least, if you want to get more out of it, we can uh, find ways to attract to, to extract more data, which then eventually may help to understand these underlying processes. So that's a bit the, 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 the state where we are at the moment. And before I close, I would like to have uh, a look a bit more into the future question, where can we go from there? And there are some nice, some really nice um, toolboxes out there which are freely available and two examples I would like to show you before I, I finish here. On the left side, we have Fatbox, which is a, a toolbox which is able to track active faulting based on raster data. And you can see here that this has been applied on numerical models, but in my opinion, there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to apply the same um, technique on data from analog models. And on the right side, we have, I think it's called Strain Map, um, which has been developed by Bruce et al. at uh, Utrecht. And it's quite a nice tool, which is able to detect different types of faults, which um, I realize is not, not, it's not such an easy task if you just use uh, certain displacement or strain components. And you can see here in this example that you really are able these days to detect if certain deformation can be attributed to shortening or extension or strike slip and so on. So with this, I would really like to emphasize again, there are these toolboxes out there. They're freely available. They're really cool. So I really hope that people would use them in the future. With this, I would like to close. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks.